Hey, everybody. We're back. It's time once again for the Disc Only Podcast. Welcome to the Disc Only Podcast, the only podcast that somehow managed to have basically everyone unavailable for the entirety of last month, which was impressive. I'm your main host, Proton John, and as always, I'm joined by all my co-hosts. I'm Tom Fox, and last month I had Ligma. (laughs) I'm Stephen George, and I am available again (laughs) after having not been available for a month. And I'm Jared, and I'm here and ready to talk. That's it. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> That's all I got. Nothing else. To <laughs> Hell yeah. So it's been two Hell months. Yeah. How y'all doing? I'm doing been, good. It's been pretty. It's been, it's like real, real talk. Like the last month and a half, like two months have been freaking actually kind of crazy. I'm really glad that things are starting to chill out. <laughs> it's been it has been a uh, very very busy last few months i'm not gonna lie having uh having ligma is probably one of the best things to happen to me because i really needed a vacation and i was forced to take one with that well, that's and fair so, enough. so so even though like there was a good chunk of it where i was miserable with the symptoms i was finally able to like clear my head and just kind of like chill out and do nothing although the dog was very unhappy that i was unable to do anything yeah but uh but yeah, no, like I was able to get my head in order and like now I'm like significantly more organized in, in what I in what like what I do and when I do it. So, hey, you know, the if there was one benefit to come out of this horrible pandemic, it was that. There have been a lot of people um, that I know um, whenever they've been hit by it, like they actually take time off and it's, it's actually super good uh, for them, like. My thing has been, um, over the past, like two months, I've been doing a lot more exercise. Like we ended up getting, uh, a Peloton bike like two months ago and I have been, I've been hitting that hard and I feel fantastic. Um, but like there have been a lot of other stuff that's come, come around. It's just been like, oh, well, frick, gotta take care of that. Oh, dang. But that is, that is one thing that I can always come back to is like, yo, I get like 30 minutes to like better myself. And that's been really fun. Like that's been a really good thing. I I have to tell you that June was the most stressful month I've had in <laughs> many 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 moons. That um, bad, huh? June was weird, it was, man. It was terrible, and like it's still bad, but it's definitely not as bad as it was. But June was June was bad. Was it? Is this like more stressful than when you had to move like during Coliseum, pretty much? Um, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and and I I think the reason is because we moved, you know, three hours away this time. Um, that makes it harder. <laughs> <laughs> also, and you know we have yeah, especially, all we the have back and more forth. St- I can imagine. We also have more stuff. <laughs> um, see, that's the problem with stuff. You get a you get a stuff, and you're like, "Oh man, this stuff, which is mine, my stuff. Oh man, my stuff. I love my stuff." And then the minute that you have to move it, you're like, "You know, I never liked stuff." <laughs> still remind burn me, stuff. I have to I have to do a move potentially in the future, and I my office is going to be a nightmare to pack. Mm. Well, then. <laughs> you probably don't want to hear me tell you. Well, guess who's screwed? <laughs> the horror that stories of having to pack screwed. up eighteen boxes of DVD cases. Oh, eighteen? You think just eighteen? <laughs> well, I I, I knew I, I knew I was I knew I was <laughs> I, I knew I was either like I knew I was either low balling or high balling, but I couldn't really was, tell which. It was twenty two just for we. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it was, Ugh. you know. Anyway, John, I, I wish you well as someone who is still <laughs> unpacking and will be unpacking until I'm 46. Unpacking until you move out of that place. <laughs> then you got to pack it all back up. Uh. I mean, the thing is, like, to an extent, when we last moved in 2019, there were boxes we never unpacked. 
And when it was time to leave, they were conveniently packed. And I was like, well, guess we didn't really need the stuff in this box very much, did we? <laughs> you moved to a smaller place, didn't you? This time? No, from uh, from two houses ago to one house ago. No, it was it was bigger. Okay, I, the I remember like you couldn't display all your games because the ceiling in your office was was uh, was vaulted. Yeah, it was um, it was not ideal, but yeah, there there were we had several thousand video games that stayed in a box. Well, I mean, no, more than one box would be a hell of a box, but you know, stayed in boxes <laughs> the entire time we lived at this last place. So I was always really envious of John because John would get on camera and you'd see games in the background and I'd be like, oh, that must be nice where you can like get to it <laughs> um, and have room to do that, I think, I hope, probably. You better, you better hope for your sake. Because it, it sucks having to move everything around otherwise. Dan, I also apologize in advance. I definitely just broke my audio recording. <laughs> Well, you got, you know, you got to fix it live. There was, oh, yeah. there was no way to fix my microphone without breaking the recording I had running. There was absolutely no way. So, but everyone was complaining. So I had to do something. So I don't have a, I don't have a recording. So if you're watching or listening this, listening to this later and John goes from uh, sounding like he's speaking into a tin can to now, you now know what happened. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I'm going to do a little... Uh, here, I'm going to do something that makes a bit more sense. Dan, I apologize. Time dot is clapping on 30 because that way you can stick it up with the video. There you go. Now I'm going back. Smart. Hooray. <laughs> Play the intro again. <laughs> okay, hang on. I got it. It's on a button. <laughs> now you can hear me say the intro and then not say anything else for the rest of the podcast. I played that was a lot slower than that one. <laughs> You're doing great. That was the that was the Tom remix. You're doing there great, you dear. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Have you guys ever heard of invert sugar? Invert no. sugar? Yes. Is that when I, you turn like a sugar shaker like upside down? I bought a bag of Swedish fish and that was one of the ingredients. Huh. No wonder why I they don't taste good because it's inverted sugar. It's not sweet. <laughs> invert sugar is a liquid sweetener made from table sugar and water. It's formed with the bonds between sugars and sucrose are broken, resulting in a thick sweet syrup comprised of 50% fructose and 50% glu glucose. So basically, they just said, they just said, screw it. Y'all want real sugar so badly, we're going to mash it with our high fructose corn syrup. <laughs> If sugar, if I, sugar's so good, why isn't there a sugar too? Okay, I, I think that's it's, what it's, this is. I like the first <laughs> Google result is: Is invert sugar healthier than sugar? It's nutritionally the same as table sugar and other added sweeteners. It's sugar like sugar too. Oh, like I, I read that and I'm like, is this freaking like? It's it sounds like something you'd get in like like a like a Minecraft mod pack that's based around food. <laughs> it's like, oh, I need to make the anti cake by throwing by by like. Putting sugar and 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 like an ender eye into a furnace <laughs> to make ender invert cake. sugar for the cake. It's my it's my mod ender cake. <laughs> there you go. Oh, I like that, that that sugar too is what we assumed would be sugar plus sugar, and it is. Yep. You just have to add additional sugar. Sugar squared. I have been it playing. Also means that no, it is not. It is not better for you. It's more. <laughs> it's more sugar. Yeah. <laughs> That's like when I when I was baking cookies on the on the package of sugar. It, like on the nutritional facts, it said like you know oh total carbohydrates sugars and then like added sugars was all that. It was, <laughs> all, all of it was added sugar and it's like the, like should that even be recorded on there as added sugar if the if the contents of the whole thing are just sugar? I tell you what, I think sugar's not gonna look like to. a. It's not gonna look like a word after we're done. Yeah, it's going to look like Sugar. <laughs> sugar. Sugar. Mustache. <laughs> Mustache. That was a good that was a good video from TFS. Yeah, it really was. They did a was it they did they did a, a joke in Dragon Ball Z Bridge based off a scene in GT where Vegeta shaves his mustache and they're talking about like why doesn't Saiyan hair grow? It's like, "Oh, True-blooded Saiyans uh, hair never changes from uh, when they're born, with the exception with the exception of beards and mustaches. Mustache. I always found that, that 
like that always freaked me up whenever I watched DBZ and I would um I would see Gohan's hair change throughout and I'm like why the frick doesn't Goku's change and now it makes sense right yep. because like Same Goku's genetics. hair never freaking changed but like you know Gohan was half human so his hair grew out and I was like this is freaking weird like why why is his hair weird like why is Trunks' hair weird but now I know because now yep. it makes sense <laughs> why did Trunks' hair grow up? the whole thing is like oh it's a warrior race they don't have time for like for aesthetic things like they they age very differently because they're expected to just die on the battlefield <laughs> Ugh. yeah it's, it's like, like i think it's like super like goku and vegeta are in like their 40s or something like that and they're still going strong all i know is dragon ball fighter z is really fun mm. that's all i know i am a i am a broly main now uh sorry dbs broly specifically uh i can do a 16 step combo and i'm really proud of that <laughs> nice nice 16 stomps boys it's it's so much oh fun. the stop all oh, the stomps are fun in that game yep i freak dude like my my main team is um uh broly dbs broly frieza and android 16 so i get i get the pizza the stomps and the dunks and it's you, just the, it's the best you picked an entire team based on hating goku uh-huh <laughs> absolutely <laughs> And you know why I did that? It was because, well, first of all, I love those three characters. Second of all, because of Life Hero. No, it, well, the dunk was because of Life Hero. I will, yeah. I will say that the dunk meister was because of that. But it's because of the fact that my buddy Roland plays all Gokus, basically. He plays GT Goku, he plays freaking Ultra Instinct Goku. And I had to make a team that hated Goku so much to give me the edge because GT Goku is kind of busted. If y'all, if y'all haven't played the game, GT Goku is like, micro sized he has like no freaking hitbox Whoa. and he's really powerful like his his level three spirit bomb does so much damage chip damage if you're if you're blocking oh my god it's so ridiculous like i can't stand gt goku but yeah so uh, if y'all haven't played dragon ball fighters yeah i recommend it also i recommend guilty gear strive because i can't stop playing it you're just you're all about the Marxist fighting games, dude. Bro, dude, I know. I have I've really got like Strive is uh Strive got me like hardcore into fighting games. I freaking love Strive. Um but like <laughs> I don't play Strive with my buddy Roland because of the fact that uh, he can't beat me. But he can beat me in <laughs> uh he can beat me in GT. Oh, I'm sorry, not GT. <clears throat> uh dragon ball fighters so we play that instead and yeah because i practice right like i practice strive like a lot so and he doesn't but he plays a lot of g uh dbzs or db what the frick is it called dragon ball fighter z there you go dbfz um, but yeah like it's just oh it's fun jared you gotta get you gotta get good at throwing the game throwing the game <laughs> like you like have outside to limit your power like goku you have to put <laughs> on your weighted training Wait. clothes Bro, when I was when I was a kid, and you know, I I grew up playing all these video games, and I had them at home. I was playing them, and I was really good. Friends would come over, and I learned real quick from an early age that if I won, the game stopped. And I was like, "Well, <laughs> guess so, I got to get good at losing about half of these." So it's funny. I got you know, I got really good at that. It's really funny that you say that because I, I have a little sister, and I have thrown so many games of Mario Party Four. Like, you know how hard it is to throw a game of Mario Party 4? <laughs> Especially when it's when half of it's based on luck. I know. But yeah, no, like um whenever whenever we were younger, like really young, um, you know, my, my sister would be like, freaking, why do you always win? I'm like, I all I do is play video games. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, you know, um that's just that's just how it was. She she kicks my behind now because she freaking plays like Apex and stuff, and she's way better at Apex than I am. Um so she she carries me now, which is funny. <laughs> that was her like, revenge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she trained for this moment <laughs> for all her life. <sighs> oh man, man. It was like uh when I was when I was growing up, my best friends were uh, were twins who were both very good at Smash Brothers. So we would play we would play free for alls and like oh man. And like you know, twin twin brothers, they were they were getting into fights like all the time, and especially mm. over video games. Dude, so, well, so it was like it was the kind of thing where it's like if one of them was winning too much, the game got turned off. Not because like it, not because one of us got frustrated with playing, but because they would get into a fist fight and my and and like one <laughs> of our parents would take the game's game away. Bro, like 
<laughs> I have a younger sister and an older brother. So like me, me and my brother, we would freaking we play a lot of Smash Brothers, and he would just freaking wipe the floor with me in Smash Brothers and Strikers. Like I, I have not played the new Strikers game because I still have a chip on my shoulder <laughs> from how bad. Yeah, dude, he used to destroy me in Strikers, man. I could not stand that crap. I did like playing, um, like in in uh, Mario Kart Double Dash. We would play a lot together like we would do it together like he would drive i'd be the thrower because i I wasn't that like i used to not be very good at video games like i wasn't the best um and i'm only good at certain video games now like um like roguelites and freaking fighting games but yeah well certain fighting games there's other fighting games i can't play at all like melty blood i can't get my head around it um but yeah like it it was i had a very wonderful childhood basically is all i'm trying to say because i always had somebody to play a game with I never really got into the older Strikers games. So when the new one came out on Switch, like, all right, cool, I'll give this a shot. Never have I been more infuriated with the AI in a game than I had with, with, with the Strikers. Because it's just like, I, because I went in there like, I, I, I went in there like, like you know, throw, Frodo throughout the Lord of the Rings. I went in there like, apple cheeked, and it's like, this is going to be an adventure. And by the end of it, it's just like, I'm just going to keep the ring. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're not supposed to win. You're supposed to feel pain <laughs> against, the AI, and, against the AI against the AI and strikers. Box against <laughs> against the AI and strikers. Very yes. Yeah, I, I think that's <laughs> like the slogan. You know, welcome to Mario Strikers. You're not meant to win. You're meant to feel pain. <laughs> <clears throat> it's like, yeah, you get uh, mad at the AI did. on your team, and then you get mad at the AI, the hard AI on the opponent's team. That's just how it works. What, the the first day that came out, uh, a bunch of us like did a uh, a stream of it, and uh, we didn't sort of understand like the uh, the the manual versus automatic thing. Whereas like uh, I think automatic is like if 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 a if a player if if like a character has a ball, then control of that uh, character goes to one of the players. For manual, it doesn't do that. If you're on manual, you stick to whatever you're on until you manually switch over them. So the AI scored more goals than we did. Because we just <laughs> because like we were playing as different characters, the AI would just take these like amazing shots. Oh man, yeah, I'm I am as I said, I'm not about strikers. I like watching it. Like there, there's I've seen I've seen some people play it on Twitch, and it look it looks fun. But I just man, I just got I got those freaking those thoughts of God. My brother used to stomp me in this crap, and I don't want to experience that crap again. <laughs> Mal and I, Mal and I played the new one um, w- when it came out, and it's genuinely fun. <laughs> but it's, I, f- I find that there's too much to like pay attention to. Mm. I feel like it would be very fun if you were playing four player because then you'd have one character to worry about. Mm-hmm. But if you're playing one or two players, you have to worry about multiple teammates, and I feel like my eyes are darting all over the screen like all the time. <laughs> Also, so I, might, I thought I, I, I might want to try it again with four player. I thought I muted my mic just now, so I apologize for just blowing out your eardrums with a cough. <laughs> my bad, because I, I clicked it and I clicked it again. And it turned off, and I'm like, "Oh frick, that didn't go through." <laughs> it did not go through. <laughs> Open your eyes, bleary eyed after coughing or sneezing. You're like, "Oh god, it's unmuted." Yep, it was. It was absolutely unmuted. Everybody in the chat was like, "Bless you," and I'm like, "Frick." <laughs> I've been my playing. Bad. I'm playing a lot of. Uh modded minecraft recently i started playing uh the sky factory one which starts off ridiculous and then gets kind of mundane and then gets really ridiculous very quickly <laughs> have, have any of you like played it or heard of it at all uh no i i haven't played is minecraft is that the one where there's like a tree you you start <laughs> off and yeah no uh, the, he's he's not wrong you start off and you're on a one block island with just one tree and you and you and like the, it, the, it's modern in a way so you can build out from that and like create more materials and whatnot just build out from that that's cool and then like uh, at least in the one that i'm playing uh in uh all the base resources come from trees for the most part so it's like oh you're on an island you're on a one dirt block with a dirt tree so you hit that dirt tree and use the resource of that to make more dirt blocks and then you could use that to grow more dirt trees so you could expand that even more Hmm. And 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 then it's like, oh well, I need this now. Well, then you got a petrified tree to make stone, or a gravel tree, and it's like, cool. Can we keep going from here? And it's like, oh, we've only just begun. How about a tree that grows bones, or a tree that grows uh that grows diamond, or um or or iron, or all that stuff? What's that metal that doesn't exist in the game? Well, how about tin or lead? 
and it's just and it just expands from there and then all of it and then like uh, at some point you know you make this big old smeltery thing and then you can make these wildly customized weapons just because of how many materials are in the game now hmm but is it fun uh <laughs> i so i've been playing it by myself for a while i feel like it'd probably be uh more fun with more people because it also depends on like if you like games like Satisfactory or Factorio, you probably like this because it's a lot of that. It's a lot of like uh, like resource management and uh, and and development in, into new areas. Mm. Um, but fair. it's uh, but uh, but uh, the Tinker's Construct stuff is very fun because you get to make these really like insane overpowered weapons and armors. The mm. armors aren't that great, but the weapons are really are, are really cool. Um, um, oh god! And then like uh, once you get enough dirt and it, like the ability to grow grass, and it's like cool. Well, how do I get um, how do I get animals? Well, I'm glad you asked, my friend, because uh, you grow animals through seeds. You plant <laughs> seeds in the ground, and you just wait for them to grow, and then once they're fully grown, bam, there's a chicken, bam, horse, bam, cow. You sounded like Morshu there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you, my friend, <laughs> <laughs> if you have enough rupees or, or rubies in uh, in CDI Zelda, but yeah, super fun. I want to play mm. it with with more people than just myself. Probably start probably start a new server for that one because I horribly botched up the uh, the storage system. Uh, speaking of um, more games, uh, John, have you have you played Strive yet? Nope. <laughs> oh my god, dude! We were planning on playing Strive together about like the like the the, the month it came out, and we just yeah. we didn't have time, and then we just never did. I I bought it on launch. <laughs> I bought it on yeah. launch with the express intention of like, oh man, I skipped a couple Guilty Gears. It'll be nice to get back because I played <laughs> Double X a ton. Because like, I, I remember there was a video of you playing, um, I think it was Double X, uh, for a Throne Controllers. And you, you won with May. You destroyed with May. And I've always wanted to go up against your May to see how like, you know, how ridiculous you are. But <laughs> we just, <laughs> we have never had the chance to do so yet. That's but the dolphin we, girl, right? Yeah. yeah. We will we will one day though. Like I, I, need, I we'll need, have to I plan it out. Just like just tell me like hey, in X amount of days we're going to play and then I'll actually like turn on the game. <laughs> Alternatively, <laughs> what, what what we could do is like try to like really like play it up throughout the year and turn it into like a massive event at TRG Coliseum. <laughs> we'll call it Murder Gym. <laughs> <laughs> In fairness to John, there are too many video games. Oh my I, god, yeah. don't even get me started. <laughs> I, I went mean, on a trip really... uh, during the month while I were gone. Uh, I went on a trip to Emil's place and I came home with I don't know how many video games, but I know it was more than 100. <laughs> I was going to say, did you, hit tri did you hit triple digits there? And the oh, answer yeah. is yes. Yeah. Oh uh, my god. <laughs> I had to leave my clothes at Emil's place. <laughs> <laughs> I almost did. I almost had to. I, I definitely John, had to take more carry-on there, than I was allowed. There's 100 games that you bought. You will have to move someday. I know. <laughs> I know. Trust me. I'm aware. But at least a bunch of them came in box protectors, so I know they'll be safe when I have to move them. I have a, yeah. I have a problem with plushies. Like, that's what I buy now is plushies. <laughs> like, like Pokemon plushies. Freaking just cute crap. Because, like, at Momocon, dude, I, I, I freaking... I, I got a bunch. <laughs> I got way too many. I got a cute little Mew plushie sitting on my desk. Like laying on my desk, it's so adorable. I literally have a giant container uh, that is full of plushies that I've gotten over the years. That I'm like, I have no room for these. They're just sitting in storage. <laughs> Whenever anyone comes <laughs> to the house, I'm like, take two things out of it. You're more than welcome to. <laughs> it's, it's there like, are five um... Waluigi plushies in this container. <laughs> I have two already around the house. Please, there's too many. It's like whenever you go into somebody's um, island on Animal Crossing and they have like the, please take these. I don't need them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's at that yeah. point when you realize that the initial storage that they, that they let you expand to still isn't enough. <laughs> yeah. I started, I, I'm okay. not really collecting, but I started, uh, I started playing Yu-Gi-Oh again. So I, you know, got to get them, uh, got to get them staple cards, what everyone's after. Oh uh, yeah. You know, you can't play that game without having, you know, various cards like Call by the Grave or Cross Crossout Designator or Ash Blossom Joyous Spring. But see, I play I play the uh, I play I don't I don't play by the meta. I play Ojamas. 
there are these little weird weird things that are normal monsters with zero attack so like so there's a lot of support cards for them however they also act as junk in your deck because you don't want to draw them hmm. so i've i've never played Yu-Gi-Oh. i've also never played pokemon but i own a lot of pokemon cards because i in, i just enjoy the artwork and collecting but Magic the Gathering, though, that was my game. Like, mm. I played I played the frick out of Magic the Gathering. I spent way too much money on cards whenever I was in uh, college. Or not college, um, like right after college. Oh, my God. Uh, have, you it, seen those, have you seen those videos about the guys, like, analyzing um, cheating in Magic the Gathering? No, I have not. It's, it's, it's interesting. Well, not really analyzed, but they, like, they go over, like, different games where, like, cheaters were playing. And, like, I guess they were, they were probably, like, caught later on. But, like, there was one dude who, like... Um, the way he shuffles like other people's decks, he like he like what he would do is he like shuffle uh, normally until he saw like a land on the bottom, shuffle it to the top, and then shuffle in a way where that land would always stay on the top of that deck, and then give it back to his oh, opponent. Oh, dude, that's dirty. Yeah, huh. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, it's um, it's like uh, so. Have you ever watched those videos? like from like wired or insider or whatever the frick where it's like a expert in something goes over the videos or like the movies that are portraying that subject yeah yeah dude so i watched one with a freaking casino boss like this dude looked the part the dude looked like a casino boss like legit and it was so funny because like he went over he went over like oceans wait was it oceans 11 i can't remember um i know he went over um uh, Casino Royale, which is one of my favorite movies, and like it was just it was so like cool like the, to see somebody who has that much knowledge about that subject talking about it. Like I've I've watched like <laughs> I have binged those videos. Like I've seen like military people talk about military scenes and movies and stuff, and it's just it's it, it like scratches an itch for me because I'm just like man, these guys are like the masters of their craft, and they go over talking about like the stuff in the movies. And it's just so much fun. Definitely like, recommend. Hey, I, I've seen a couple of, uh, as well, and it seems like the two, like, it, it seems like it kind of goes in extremes for, like, what's the most enjoyable. Because, I uh, like, I like watching when the when the experts are really impressed by how accurate they got it. Yes. But I also like watching it where the experts are super disappointed by how <laughs> yeah. wrong they got it. Yeah, yeah, dude. Like, oh, man. They're, oh, I can't remember which one it was, but uh, it, it was the Casino Moth Boss. He was just like, this would never ever happen <laughs> <I was like, laughs> oh my god because like um he, he saw he saw some inconsistencies with um with the uh, casino royale and whatnot and i don't really care because I, I love that movie i actually whenever erica was out of town the other week i i went on a bond binge and i freaking watched nice. uh what was it i watched uh from casino royale onwards so i did casino royale um quantum of solace skyfall which is god skyfall is phenomenal it's real good um and I skipped Spectre because freaking <laughs> uh, Prime Video was like, hey, you watched all these other movies. You got to buy this one. I'm like, what the frick? Why do you do this to me? <laughs> so didn't watch Spectre. But then I ended up watching uh, No Time to Die. And man, that, oh, my God. That, that was a good movie, dude. I feel like, bad. I was disappointed by the ending of that one. I, I kind of was, too. But at the same time, it's just like whoa like that ending that ending punches you in the mouth for real I'm not gonna talk about it yeah uh, we can talk about off but, cast, but yeah like i i like i agree with you skyfall and casino royale definitely the strongest of the craig movies yeah uh, that's what his name was I, was I was gonna ask speaking of bond bond talk uh uh secret agent jacob's in the chat and he's a huge huge uh bond nerd i need to talk to you about bond movies later jacob frick yeah <laughs> He, he is like one of the biggest Bond. I mean, that's why he's Secret Agent Jacob, right? Like, <laughs> it makes sense. But yeah, dude, Skyfall has one of the best villains. Um, I love Mads Mikkelsen and freaking, um, uh, whatchamacallit, freaking uh, Casino Royale. Oh, right. He was. I need to that. watch another James Bond film. I don't think I've seen a, a James Bond film since Goldeneye. So oh. it's been. There's been a, I think there's been a few since then. Well, yeah. the, the, so that was the first of the Brosnan movies. There were four Brosnan movies. Tomorrow yeah, Never Dies, like Golden Eye, the World's Not ones. Enough, and Die Another Day. It was the old ones as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Goldfinger, dude. Goldfinger was my favorite back in the day. Yeah, I've seen I've seen a handful of the uh, the older Bond films, but then I think the most recent one I've seen is Goldeneye. Yeah. 
Out of the Brazen ones, I, I like The World Is Not Enough. I saw that a fair amount, but like, Dying of the Day is pretty eh. And I remember <laughs> kind of liking Tomorrow Never Dies. But like, the Craig movies are just a whole different energy compared to the other ones. If you liked yeah. the Timothy Dalton ones, where they were a bit more gritty and serious, uh, but they were kind of ill-received, like, these are the gritty and serious, but well-received equivalent. Yeah. So, like, Casino Royale is really good. Uh, Skyfall's good, and if you like the older movies, it'll definitely give you, like, a nice bit of nostalgia. Uh, Quantum of Solace happened during the writer's strike, so it was kind of hindered from that alone. Yeah, mm -hmm. that one's hit or miss. And for some reason, no one remembers Spectre other than, like, Batista was in it. So, I need, I, I need to watch Spectre, because Spectre, like, the story of Spectre actually has a lot of impact on freaking No Time to Die. Yeah. And I was like, I'll be okay, I'll just skip it. And the first thing that freaking happens in the movie is like, oh, it's Spectre. And I'm like, God dang it! <laughs> I have to go back and watch it now, dang it! So, I'm probably going to spend the three ninety nine and be like, alright, Prime, give it to me. I think, uh... I think one of my favorite things about about the uh, like the Gold Knife video game for the N sixty four is that all the game modes are named after the movies. <laughs> yeah, I was like you. I, I just remember like you only live twice is one of the game modes, and it's just like survival, but with two lives. Yeah, like Golden Eye was a freaking masterpiece of a video game uh, for its time. Yes, for sure. Like I love it. it that game is meant to be played with a freaking uh, mouse and keyboard, though. Like legit. Oh, that mod, yeah. Yeah, like, playing that with a mouse and keyboard is just so much fun. I think it's like GoldenEye Source is what it's called? Yes. Uh, they, I believe that got C&D'd by, uh, oh, by, like, the James, uh, by, like, whoever owns the copyright to James Bond. Sad. More than likely, yeah. But also there's yeah. rumors that at some point a GoldenEye remake is coming out on Xbox. Like, it's been heavily rumored. And I think Was it there... even popped up on, like, their achievement pages. Yes, so, that's, hmm. that's based on the fact they found achievements for uh, GoldenEye. And it, wasn't the, it wasn't the leak of the remake, which was supposed to happen on 360. So supposedly, in the next yeah. year or so, there should be a GoldenEye remaster slash remake. Other that's than weird. the one that would, the Wii I, I wouldn't mind if... I, honestly, I wouldn't <laughs> mind if it was just a port. Like, I'd be 100% okay with a port. I, I wouldn't care at all if they... If they Here, like, here's maybe, the thing. Maybe, maybe, maybe up-res the textures a little bit. <laughs> here's the thing. Those who were very fond of GoldenEye rarely have gone back to GoldenEye since. It has That's not true. aged well control-wise, no. so doing some touch-ups to it might be a wise decision. Well, I know I that when they ported like, Perfect it's... Dark to the 360, they up they touched up the controls and stuff, and that, that yeah. has aged much better because of it. Yeah, um, well, I remember playing that crap freaking on, at Coliseum. <laughs> that was a nightmare. It was fun though. Like it, it was it, great, it, but it, it was a nightmare. Were we playing that on a CRT or we just have that monitor? Uh, that was uh, a CRT we had. And yeah, that yeah. was that was great. Like that that that's how that game is meant to be played. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, the problem aside from the control scheme for GoldenEye, which is hard uh, now, <laughs> but uh, the draw distance is it's terrible real bad like yeah. in, in the in the first level they hand you the sniper rifle and <laughs> if when you are getting shot and you cannot see the enemy shooting <laughs> you don't know where it's coming from <laughs> and like yeah. that's not that's not a good look when they've just handed you a sniper rifle and like you know in 97 or 98 or whatever you're like oh this is this is fine but now in 20 whatever year it is it's you know it's the year of acceptable. our lord I mean, do people even uh -huh. use the sniper rifle in Goldeneye? Like, I thought that was always the most useless weapon because of that. In the first I, level, they give it to you. I think it was so you could snipe the guys at the end of the at the end of that tunnel, like near that first sniper tower. Hmm. I mean, it's it's for melee, is what it's for. Because <laughs> like, it has its own melee to... option. Yeah. yeah, it has its own melee option. I just used the proximity mines. That was my freaking jam back in the day. I would just throw them everywhere. <laughs> that was uh my favorite. My favorite game mode to play is just because of how stupid it was. Was uh, License to Kill, which gave you one hit KOs and slappers only. <laughs> oh, that's so good. A freaking uh, I love Golden Gun too. Like mm. you can pick up the Golden Gun and you just freaking slay people. You're just you win. <laughs> was uh, I think the game mode Man with the Golden Gun. I think I think the only kills that counted were the ones with the Golden Gun. So not only were you like an unstoppable force because it was one hit KOs. You were also very vulnerable because you had everybody else coming after you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the 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 thing that made I mean, the the single player for GoldenEye was actually genuinely good, but 
what made GoldenEye was was multiplayer. Mm-hmm. And yeah, which is wild. It got added like game... two weeks before the game came out. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, it would have completely changed everything. The only I mean, game that I've ever played that has gotten close to capturing the same magic of GoldenEye is probably Time Splitters. Um, oh yeah, which would make the, sense because that was the, the GoldenEye mul- devs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the 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 multiplayer in Time Splitters is extremely good and very much GoldenEye esque. The map all- editor in those games too is really good, mm-hmm. especially in, in two and Future Perfect. They're really good map editors. It's always really funny to me whenever like a game gets super popular from an extra feature. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, like I think one of the biggest things about that, in my opinion, is Fortnite because Fortnite was a full game. Like, it was a tower defense game. Yeah, it was a tower defense game. And then they were like, oh, you could do a hundred player battle royale for free. And then that exploded, like completely exploded. And I just I always find that really funny that you never really know what's going to uh, catch fire. And, like, always keep your mind open to those things, I guess. Can you even still play, like, non-Battle Royale Fortnite anymore? Only on Ah. uh, PC. They actually literally did not port that mode to the console versions. Or at least, like, not the Switch one, for example. I think it really is just the PC version still has that. Mm. Because because you know like as much as like the battle royale exploded, I've heard good I heard good things about the tower defense. Yeah, it was really fun. Like Erica, I, I think Erica played it for a little while. Um, and whenever she was whenever she was working in um PR, she actually worked on Fortnite before it got big, like for the PR for Fortnite. And yeah, like I I'm, I'm not gonna say that it was my it was because of my wife that, that game blew up or anything, but <laughs> it was because of my wife that the game blew up. You know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> get that extra now she yeah she worked on uh she worked on the pr for that and uh yeah that, that was super cool <laughs> every time i play fortnite now i'm going to describe it as fortnite a chatia game <laughs> wasn't there, made, what, made by chatia wasn't there another mode for fortnite that they were working on that was like uh it wasn't an rts I know what you're talking about, and I think they were. Like a horde mode or something? Yeah. Hmm. I remember. No, this is is before no build, uh, because I remember it was was around the time when Battle Royale was getting popular, because I think they had, like, multiple side games in, like, planned for Fortnite, and the Battle Royale got so big that they just focused on that instead. Yeah, there was, there was a, there was a, a part, was Tower Defense the horde mode? Maybe it was. Anyway, there was, I mean, that that was the main one. That was Save the World mode. Yeah. Okay. It was forty dollars. <laughs> I that's what I remember is that I remember looking into it at some point, and I didn't have an interest in the battle royale, but I, I had an interest in the other one. I was like, oh, this is forty dollars. Every care, every person that's going to play this has to pay forty dollars, but the battle royale is free. That doesn't make any sense. The uh, the battle pass, man, like that mm-hmm. right there. That is that is where you make your money. Because you give away the game for free. I mean, y'all know this. You give away the game for free, and then hey, you want a Spider-Man costume? <gasps> oh, you know, like like <laughs> like that right there, man. That freaking sells, dude. Would like, you like to play as Naruto? Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to play as John Wick? Well, we have the option for you. Oh my god, man! It's just it's so crazy how like that mindset that uh that business model works so freaking well have you ever wanted naruto to meet the master chief <laughs> or ryu i i really found it funny whenever fortnite got master chief before smash brothers did <laughs> 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 like that that i was just like oh my god i cannot believe it because i think I, that was like i've um oh man when that was re- re- uh, announced man people lost their minds over that I mean, I hate Darth to say Vader's it, but well. one is more popular than the other. I hate to no, say I, it. No, I agree. I, 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 I 100% agree. I've also come to the conclusion that Nintendo is, is like a company for Japan, and we just get the leftovers at this point. <laughs> Sometimes. Like, I, it was one of, the, one of the coolest things, though, whenever freaking Hero and Banjo was announced, because like it was for both when they did that, right? Like everybody over in over in japan has played dragon quest and a lot of people over here well everybody well except for me everybody except for me has played banjo kazooie so like it was really cool to have both of those at the same time um and that was a i find that that was a really awesome thing of goodwill from nintendo 
But... I think it was uh, it went over really big in like um like uh like South America, like a lot of the Hispanic regions when uh, when Terry was announced as well. Because I think I think that mm-hmm. I think King of Fighters and all the, that franchise is really big around uh, around those areas. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I there there were a lot of char- uh, a lot of characters that were announced for Smash that that are in Smash now that I I, I still can't believe Sephiroth is in Smash Brothers like yeah. that right there like it's funny I was I was kind of done with Smash, um, and then freaking Sephiroth was announced I don't even I haven't even played Final Fantasy VII I've watched Erica play it but I'm like Sephiroth okay why was I so freaking hyped like for that it got me like. Sephiroth in that game got me back into Smash Brothers, which was ridiculous. And then, and then you got Steve from Minecraft, and it's just like, <laughs> are you freaking joking with me, man? That's who, ridiculous. Who apparently is now ca- tearing up the competitive scene because of the new techniques that have been found out in the game. Oh, oh I'm not surprised. Yep. Like it's like, um, what was it? Uh, in Dragon Ball Fighter Z, Lab Coats, Lab Coat Twenty One was banned because of the fact that she was way too good of a character. <laughs> <laughs> like she was the first first character in that game to be banned at all tournaments, period. She was just so good at the game. In the game. She's the Meta Knight. Yeah, yeah. basically. Oh yeah, the, oh. dude, the Joker reveal though at the uh, game awards. Oh yeah. my god. That was so good. We were watching that and I freaking went out after the game awards and picked up my copy of Smash Brothers at midnight. That was so freaking hype. I love I love video games, man. Yeah, I, I do find it funny though how in the past I hope this isn't going to be a pattern. The past two Smash Bros. games has been like the dominant character in the competitive scene has been has been a third party character. <laughs> yeah, <It's, laughs> that always seems to be the case too. It's always the extra characters that are just freaking busted, and I kind of like that honestly because it's just funny that way. Um, also, <laughs> Sephiroth wasn't invited; he just showed up. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's believable he's just like oh cloud's here guess i'll just show up and mess with him he, oh, he chopped man. off he chopped off gino's hand and took the uh took the I- oh envelope my... from it bro you can't do that <laughs> not my boy uh the last time i saw man, gino what... was in freaking uh what was it uh Mario and luigi superstar saga yeah <laughs> he wasn't even in the remake i know they took him out <laughs> it made me upset uh I love Superstar Saga though. Like that's a game. That is a game that was like a big part of my uh my like middle childhood, dude. Like that game was fun. That and Mega Man Battle Network, which I'm so excited that we are yeah. getting. Oh, the collection. Oh, I can't wait. I hope I, they redo a little bit of the music. Ooh. I hope they uh add some of the quality of life changes yeah. in the DS remakes. Because I, as as I recall, in some of the GBA ones, there was a really notorious dungeon in the first game. Oh, it's very are, difficult to navigate, dude. One hundred percenting those games is almost impossible. It's a nightmare. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's a literal nightmare. Like, oh my god. But um, yeah, I I'm hoping that I'm hoping that we just get like really good. Either I know it's gonna be like a collection. I hope they do something extra with it. But like, dude, oh, the music in those games, man, is so it's it's untouchable for me, man. That was that was peak childhood. Someone in chat just reminded me that they uh, that they also announced worldwide, by the way, uh, at least at, at least as uh, as far as I could tell, worldwide, uh, Monster Rancher. But you raise kaiju. Yeah, <laughs> cool. cool. I am uh, I am super excited about that. I want to. I I know. I said on Twitter I wanted to raise a Ghidorah, but I want to raise a Gamera. I want a giant turtle. I want a giant rocket turtle. <laughs> or uh, alternatively, I'll take a I'll take a Godzilla with a drop kicking move. I don't know. You want you don't want an Ultraman or a Jet Jaguar? I'm listen. As a fan of of like of mystery science theater, seeing that Godzilla like fly by the <laughs> screen—that's <laughs> one of the few I, like, I have not seen. Stand. I've been always been sad. I've never found that recording. I, I love that one, dude. I like because like they can't I've, sell I've, it. I've, 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 I've only seen the intro to that one, uh, rather. Oh, yeah. But I, 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 I love yeah. yeah, I love that. So yeah, they can't, they can't re-air it. They can't uh, sell it. So I, I've never, I just consider it lost media. I'm sure someone has a backup of it. I just haven't dug that far into trying to find it. One of my friends, I think, has a good ch- collection, uh, a good like chunk of the MST3K episodes. I'll have to see if they have it. Yeah, because that's a Joel episode, right? 
I believe sure, so. Yeah, the that's one, that's one of the old ones. Were, were mostly Joel. Gamera is really neat. He Gamera. is made of turtle meat. We you all love, love you, Gamera. Gamera. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the the Klonoa rem or like the the Klonoa coming out again as well. I'm so happy about that. Yeah, like, like at, at, at some point I was just like, I gotta get those games on uh, on GameCube. It's like, hey, now I don't gotta shell out a hundred dollars for each of them. I mean, they're mm -hmm. not on GameCube, so the good news, you save money. I thought <laughs> <laughs> wait, the, the old Klonoa games weren't on GameCube. I thought they were PS1 and PS2. Yeah. They're exclusives. They're on Wii. Huh. The, the, my, the first my one got a remake on Wii, yeah. And then there's oh, like okay. three Game Boy Advance Dreamcast. games, two we only got over Either here. way, they're probably they're probably mad expensive. For some reason, I thought they were both on GameCube. They Cube. are definitely mad expensive. I think the PS1 one goes for like 400 bucks. <laughs> or you can buy, I think the digital was available for five, maybe, for, for PS on PSN. I don't know if that even mm. was the case. Mm. Video games were a mistake. Yes. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> see, I would uh, see. You know how those like that uh, that um, what the heck is that? Yeah, Hayao Miyazaki with like the cigarette saying anime is a mistake. <laughs> I want the I want the same thing with video games, but for Miyamoto, it's just a picture of Miyamoto <laughs> saying video games with the subtitle saying video games were a mistake. I mean, we got already close enough with the never ask me for anything again from uh, <laughs> oh, Sakurai. 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 Yeah. Dude, yeah. Uh, I, I I hope he I, I like I don't know if he's he's definitely not like I hope on the uh, like on the game on the last Smash Bros game he ever he ever develops because every single time he's like I'm never developing one again and he comes back uh, I hope on the last one that he actually stops he just goes for never ask me for anything ever again I mean he's I aware of the meme because was it Harada yeah. the the director for Tekken uh, talked to him about it and he's like yeah this is a misunderstanding it's like a mistranslation. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, but I, I do hope that uh, Sakurai gets to do something that is not Smash before he yes. has to do the next Smash. I, hope I mean, he gets to make a terrible kart racer. I mean, like yeah. he he knows it's terrible and he chooses to make a terrible kart racer. You just you just want him to do in the next Garfield kart. It's okay. I do. I want him to do it using like the Pringles mascot, like whatever he wants. To do. <laughs> the, like Everyone the new, is here. The new Pringles like, mascot or the old one? both aren't they the you same can, you can you get to choose well i mean like he what like he got an update and he's a lot more minim minimalistic now oh, okay and occasionally well, well, while driving your car breaks down and you don't get to end the race early you just have to sit and did, wait till everyone did, else finishes the race you're just describing it, pulse racer on the xbox it's literally a game where if you go too fast you have a heart attack and you have to wait until you're revived to drive again <laughs> I want That's to see incredible. the Pringles man have a heart attack, and I need Sakurai <laughs> in order to do that. How many yeah. other how many other mascots can we throw into this? Who's Pringles owned by? Well, Probably that uh, should Frito Lay's. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> no, yeah. well, the reason it matters is because I want to make sure that they are. Uh, they're owned, I think they're owned by Kel. No, was yeah, they're owned by Kellogg's. Like I, I just I, I think, just want to. So so like Tony the Tiger would be on there. We could see him have a heart attack. We don't. It doesn't have to all be Kellogg's. We can listen. Sakurai's got the power. He made Smash Brothers. You can you can pull them in from from wherever. So I, I guess the question is, what what mascots do you want to see have a heart attack in a video game? Oh my God! Let's Peanut Jr. out this list. Yes, Baby Nut. I would love that. Yeah. I would love to see Baby Nut have a uh, have Baby a Baby Nut. Baby Nut is the reason why 2020 was terrible. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I was at a Super Bowl party when that uh, when that commercial first aired. Bro, and when, like, they, when, when they when they first came up with the name Baby Nut, someone someone I was watching it with went, "That is not okay." <laughs> <laughs> like, like uh, I saw a uh, <laughs> I saw a tweet one day. Uh, and it was basically, it was Baby Nut, right? And the tweet said, you are responsible for everything that has been wrong in the last three years because he came out right before the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> um, we we definitely want Colonel Sanders. Mm. Colonel Sanders not, is in stride. I, I wouldn't want to see Chuck E. Cheese have a heart attack. Oh. <laughs> we, we, wouldn't have, we wouldn't have Poggers without him. <laughs> Poggers? We wouldn't, we wouldn't have Poggy without him. The Pillsbury Doughboy, absolutely. <laughs> Bro. Yes. The uh the the Keebler elves. Oh my god, yes. They and all they, they all race in one they're like the um Yeah, they, they're they, all they, in one car. <laughs> they would act they would act like the lost Vikings in uh in yes. um uh what the hell is that game called? Here's Donut. the storm, where you where you control each of them individually. Yo, Dan's like Ronald McDonald, and I'm like, frick yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> His theme song is just Ronald McDonald Insanity, the, the, the you and Owen was her remix. 
You the honk the horn and it goes burp, 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 burp. The, the <laughs> dun, dun, dun. from uh, the Lacoste shirts. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to add just in that. Um, Someone suggested the hamburger helper glove. I mean, that's just Glover's brother. The California Raisins, all of them? <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. And they're all playable characters. They all have their <laughs> own cards. They're the Ninja Turtle <laughs> equivalent. Takes, they, they take up half the roster. <laughs> get the get the, get the the Car Fox from Carfax, too. He's in it. Oh, we're expanding outside of food now, are we? Oh, yeah. We're going everywhere. Oh, oh I, no. If that's the case, I want the general. <laughs> oh, God. But general. then you get Shaq, too, because he's in half those commercials. Yeah, yeah, dude. We get Shaq. Freaking, Shaquille yeah. O'Neal presents the California Raisins and Co. Cart Racing by Sakurai. By, by Masahiro. A, a HAL Laboratory or a Sora <laughs> Limited production. <laughs> Question. Um, did, uh, did Sakurai work on the latest Kirby game or no? No, he hasn't worked on Kirby since like... Since Super Return, Star? I imagine. So, no, way, way later than that. Way later. Well, Superstar Ultra, you think? Okay. Air Ride, maybe? He definitely worked on Air Ride. See, he's itching to do a kart racer. This is perfect. <laughs> People say also, air ride in Nightmare and Dreamland. Bro, somebody just said, "Is this just food fight the card racer kart racer?" And I'm like, "Oh my <laughs> freaking god!" <laughs> no. And I'm I thinking, never, you know, I never want to think about that movie ever again. We get Scruff maybe just McGruff. To spice it up, uh, William Taft. Yeah. Like, okay. Just to just include a random like U.S. Like president. president? <laughs> I so I, what I think, just to, just so we're like culturally sensitive here, is that like every region has their own like random leader that it gets added as a uh, as a as like a playable character. So for the U.S., it's William Taft. Um, like for <laughs> for England, it could be like uh, like uh, Tony Blair. Um, Limo emu. <laughs> you know, we'll just, we'll just have like uh, you know, just just spread it all over the place. We'll see. It'd, it'd be like Soul Calibur two. Yeah, exactly. Then, Except instead of console, console variants, it'd be played. region variants. Yeah. Yeah. Man, then you then you just get you get one like really really uh, high up there content creator as well for you know the millennials. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> like like PewDiePie is in it or something. You guys know about the uh, the um, the Yogg's Cast deal, DLC for Sonic and All Stars Racing Transformed? Yep. Wait, what? You could play as Simon in the PC version <laughs> of Sonic and All Stars Racing. And I think all the benefit, I think all the the profits from that still go to a go, go to a charity. Oh, that's fantastic! That version, that the PC version in particular is nuts because you got Simon, but then you also have there's a Team Fortress Two character in that game where I think it switches between the Pyro, the Spy, and the Heavy depending yes. on which vehicle is being used. What the frick? Uh, yeah, so like when you transform into like the flight mode, it's like the the Spy, it's the Spy, and, and the I think boat, the boat the is the Heavy. Like yeah. Danica, Pat cool. Dan really Danica Patrick and Wreck-It Ralph were in all versions. I think Wreck-It Ralph was only available in the beginning. Dude, uh, let me see. Can I can I just say like the first Wreck-It Ralph movie was so god tier. Like that was like that was just freaking because we didn't really have too many like video game crossover movies that were actually decent, right? And freaking like to be able to see Sonic in the big on the big screen and like in a in like a Disney movie or a Pixar movie or whatever that was just really freaking cool. Like. I I love I love freaking the first record Ralph. Second one, eh. It was too memey for me. But the first one, man. I mean, now we got like Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, which are phenomenal. Mm. Um which oh my god, man, freaking Tails in that movie. <laughs> Chef's kiss, man. Frick yeah. Still haven't seen the second one. Is it on I... digital watch yet like for free or do you have to it... rent it? Should be on Paramount, Paramount Plus. Plus, I'd imagine. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't. I forget if we even have that in Canada. But like, I want to watch the new Beavis and Butthead movie. So, but I don't want yeah. Paramount Plus just for the Beavis and Butthead movie and Sonic Two. <laughs> you could always watch <laughs> Jackass Forever. <laughs> I saw that movie in theaters, man. It was, it was. There was a lot of there was a lot of male body parts in that movie. That's all I'm going to say about it. There was. A... I, I actually really like those guys. Like those guys are hilarious to me. But the last movie was just like it was all just ding dong the entire movie <laughs> good lord there's one other character i i it's it's a first party character for for like sonic and all-stars but it's still one that was really funny to me when it first came out uh the football manager for sonic and all-stars racing transformed 
<laughs> which was just like a it was like a guy in like a fancy suit wearing a helmet that looked like a soccer ball. I so speaking of other movies, I want to see Lightyear just for the cat, just for the little companion because mm. he looks awesome. <laughs> I can't remember his name. I think it's Socks is the cat. I think companion. yeah, Socks the cat. Yeah, like he it, he just looks like such a fun character, dude. Like that is the only reason why I want to watch that movie. <laughs> We uh we do not have the Paramount Plus, but we have what, in my opinion, is too many of the streaming services. There are can't... too many now. Well, I I feel okay. I kind of I don't watch a lot of stuff. However, we get a, a a subscription to a thing, and we're like, oh, we have the Netflix, and then I'm like, hey, mm-hmm. mom and dad, we're gonna give you our login for the Netflix, and they're like, oh, great. And then me and Mal, like, don't watch anything. And I'm like, ah, you know, maybe we should end the Netflix. And I talk to my parents. And I'm like, y'all watching anything? They're like, oh, yeah, we're watching this show. And I'm like, w- on what? And they're like, the Netflix? <laughs> and then I'm like, <laughs> I, like oh, I can't dog. get rid of the Netflix. And then in the meantime, me and Mal are like, oh, there's the show we want to watch. It's on the Hulu. So we get a subscription to the Hulu. And then we're about done with the Hulu. And I'm like. You know, mom and dad, you watching anything? They're like, oh, we're watching two shows right now. I'm like, oh, what shows are those? They're like, well, we're watching one on the Netflix and we're watching one on the Hulu. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, I guess I can't ever get rid of these because like, they're always watching the show. When, uh, and was... like, I can't tell them that because they would feel bad. And I know they don't watch disc only. So I just, I, <laughs> I can vent here that I, I am keeping subscription services that my parents watch and I do not. <laughs> it's fine. It's I would totally I would fine. laugh so hard if like if like a like a like a like a Papa George username popped up in chat and was like, oh, that's how you feel then. <laughs> oh my god, that would be so bad. <laughs> be horrible. We just Ugh. we just got um we we just got H- HBO came with our internet when we moved, so now we have HBO. And I'm you got to stop I telling your parents envision. about the different subscription <laughs> services you're getting. I think is the bottom well, line I'm, here. I'm hoping, I'm hoping maybe I can wean them off. I'd be like, well, it should, you know, the HBO's got all these other shows, and then I'll talk to them one day, and they won't say they're watching the Netflix or the Hulu, and then I'll finally be able to, you know, cancel them. But then it's it's going to come the time where it's like, oh, but this show was on the Netflix. So then, like, they go to start up, and it's like this account's been deactivated, and they call you up, and it's like, what's happened, Stephen? And there's no way I would be able to tell them, like, oh, I quit. I'd be like, oh, there must be an error. And then I would. <laughs> and, 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 you, and you would never get it fixed. Yeah. I just, I, you know, like, I, I feel bad. I want my parents to have a thing that they can, you know, watch and enjoy. And they've gotten so much joy out of the streaming services. So, like, there's, I can't take that away from them. I'm like, no, no, no. They, they, they enjoy the shows. So I'm going to let yeah. them watch the shows. I, um, oh, shoot. What is it? I we had Disney Plus for a while, um, and then like I just kind of we kind of like fell away from watching all the Marvel stuff. We might get it again just to be able to watch uh, Multiverse, um, but like yeah, it, it like uh, they kind of like oversaturated the uh, the Marvel stuff. I mean, mm. <laughs> Morbius though, man, that 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 is just a meme and a half. The, the whole oh, yeah. Morbin time thing, man. Holy frick! That, uh, that, uh, that there's there's so many memes that have like that have like. It's come and gone, gone, and they like they sort of like live their natural lifestyle. Yeah. Morbius was like, they're gone, and it and, and the and you can see the moment it died because it was when the uh, it was when <laughs> the studio tried to get in on the joke <laughs> by, make, by, by making by uh, making who, who was it um what the hell's his name the the Jared actor Leto. yeah Jared Leto like showing off a uh, like trying to hide a script for Morbius two it's yeah. Morbin time guess what oh. time it is. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 you're, the... you're missing a part. So that was when people were like, all right, it's dead now. And then, like, two days later, they re-released the movie in theaters. Yeah. <laughs> and it sold $30,000 worth of seats or something like that. Like, it oh. was, it did it was... terrible. So everyone it... was excited, like, this is the perfect punchline to end the Morbin Time thing on. <laughs> because they literally forced a studio to, like, do terrible with a movie twice. Oh man, no, eighty-five thousand dollars. That's still not good. No, yeah, not no, at those all. are not like 
Uh, you know, I was making jokes where it's like uh, Marvel will never release another, another movie until they make back all their money from Morbius. But, <laughs> but like th that, like around that time as well, was this strange phenomenon of like a lot of vampire based media coming out around that time. Because you had like those two vampire games that became really popular. Popular. I can't remember what they're called. It was like the one that's like a top down one. Vampire uh, Survivors where, like, and then yes. the Rising, the Uprising. Yeah. I and love that, and there's like another vampire game that's like in the works that was uh that was announced at, at, at quote unquote E3 Summer Game Fest or whatever you want to call it <laughs> D2. <laughs> there you go, yeah. <laughs> Not like yeah, like the whole the whole Mor Morbius thing is just freaking like it's just a it's a masterclass of just how to freak up in theaters. Um but like I I am exceedingly excited for Blood and Thunder. Is it Love and Thunder? Sorry, Love and Thunder. Love and Thunder, yeah. For Thor, Love, and Thunder. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, man. yeah. That's going to be... Taika Waititi's back, and I'm cool with that, dude. He he freaking destroyed Ragnarok, and I love Ragnarok, so... Yeah, Rag there's Ragnarok a bunch of reviews great. out now for the movie. Yeah. I I barely watched, like... Uh, up until I think I saw, like, uh, like, Infinity War, the only other Marvel movie I had seen at that point was Iron Man 2 because I won the tickets for it. <laughs> nice. Like, I, I, feel... I had no interest in any of that at all for the longest time. I so, feel bad because uh, for my birthday one time during a TRG trip, I wanted to go see the latest Marvel movie that came out, and Emil and Tim had never seen any of them. So they came with me because it was my birthday, and it was uh, the second Thor movie. <laughs> oh, uh -huh. no! Oh, Routinely geez. known as one of the worst, like, least liked movies of the series. So yeah. So I just, I just um, felt bad that, like, that was their experience. <laughs> so uh, I, have a, I have an unpopular opinion. I find that uh, Iron Man three is the best one overall. I, I, mean, I would say I would say three is better than two, but two and one are about the same. But mm. it's not by much. I just I really like that director's like style of storytelling, um, and that is why three is my favorite Iron Man. And I know I know that like there there are people in chat that are like ooh, and there are people in chat like yeah, you know, because like, it's very it's it's a very heated thing actually in the. Uh, in that community it's like which one's the best one i'm like i really like three because it's it's such a more grounded story as, as grounded as you can possibly get with a man in the iron suit hmm. but like i don't know it's just there's just something like homey about it i, don't know, I, there, I like that i i don't i i like iron man three i still think the first one's the better of the three but at the same time like i feel you'd have to do at least a little bit of homework going into three because the whole thing yeah. about his ptsd from the avengers movie Yes. And then also, I feel like they kind of handled mishandled aim a bit. Like, I feel like it's a bit yes. sloppy, the the whole villain thing. That's my issue with it. And then yeah. the weird side story about him just kind of crashing at some kid's, like, garage was also like, <laughs> this is cool, but also really weird at the same time. Because <laughs> yeah, this no, kid's that, never that was... getting mentioned again. <laughs> yeah. Well, the cool... Th I, you know what? I, was I he really in the comics? I really like the fact that that kid showed up at Tony Stark's funeral. I really like that. Okay, like, he's that's a nice there. touch. That is actually a nice yeah. touch. Yeah. No, that, that, cause like, I was like, who the frick is this kid? Like, I had no idea who it was. And then it hit me while I was in the theater and I bawled. I was like, spoilers for like a five year old Marvel kid. movie, by the way. <laughs> oh, dude, I lost it, man. I freaking lost it whenever I realized that that was the kid from three. I was like, oh. <laughs> there was, um, I, I, for some reason, like I, I thought of this. I remember seeing images uh, going around online of like comparing the different Iron Man suits to different sodas. I just posted it in the Discord. <laughs> oh no! I love, oh I love no! Let <laughs> <laughs> oh, me get screen this on screen. Yeah. <laughs> the Diet Coke, though. <laughs> Like the, the, the caffeine-free Diet Coke one kills me because it's so <laughs> accurate. <laughs> Oh, that's great! Man, I, uh, I very often forget that they have caffeine-free uh, Coke. Forget about that. But uh, never not diet, which pisses me off. Yeah, I, I like you gotta like you gotta like order it online or like scour a grocery store. Did you know that, that caffeine-free Dr Pepper exists? I wouldn't know because every store I go to doesn't doesn't put it on the shelf. It, like, like I, 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 lo I love soda. I'm a sugar junkie. I don't like caffeine, <laughs> dude. They took they took freaking honeycomb away from me, Tom. They took honeycomb away from me in my in my local 
in my local stores they don't have honeycomb in none of the stores i have to order it online bro <laughs> y'all know that i am a freaking connoisseur of of the good cereal and i want my honeycomb all right <laughs> Sometimes if you if you talk to your grocery store manager, they may, you know, carry a thing, a product for you. There was you know, just FYI. What like what I'm what I'm like the the one thing that, that that like happened that like made me realize that like maybe <laughs> maybe I, I'd be able to find this magical Bigfoot caffeine free Dr Pepper was when I went to a Randall's one time and I was just looking through the soda section and they had the you know how like under the shelf under the product they got like the tag with like the price and like what the product is and I saw there in in glistening black text on on a on a white background uh, on on that label was was Dr Pepper calf free and I was like <gasps> and I looked up above that and there was none there Aww. so either so either it is something that people want and it gets sold out really quickly or they're a bunch of dirty liars over at Randall's. <laughs> oh God! They set that. They set that sign up just to upset you. It, it was just <laughs> I, for you. that was the first time I'd ever been in that Randall's. <laughs> they knew you were it's coming. It's like I walk in. Like I walk in there every week, like jauntily, like 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 I'm uh, like today's the day. I'm getting my caffeine. For, I like point to the uh, to the employees there and talk about my my caffeine free Dr Pepper, and then like. The guy at the door sees me like walking in all happy, and then sees me walking out extremely pissed. <laughs> Steven, you want to use this chance? Though. Oh, never mind. Uh oh. What, what were you gonna say, John? Gonna say, Steven, you want to use this chance to also start a beef with a with a restaurant, not with a with a chain of like stores or something? Since everyone else seems to have a I beef story. Oh, I I, I don't have I a problem ain't with our. Never even heard of Randalls, but I can tell <laughs> you that I don't like them. It's a Texas chain. <laughs> See, see, I didn't name where where I was having trouble. I just said my local stores. I'm never getting right. sponsored by a grocery store anyway, so I figure I might as well air my grievances here. What even Not anymore? Would be a grocery store sponsorship for like a streamer? Like, do you have to like vlog yourself going and buying Shopping. groceries? <laughs> Listen, oh, H E B, hit me up, bro. Yeah, I, I want to see Tom. Be kinder. <laughs> to not to, I, no, I, I, no, I, you know, screw Randalls. I will not be kind to Randalls. H E B, though, hit me up, bro. I want to see Tom sponsored by like balls energy drink like that oh my that god laugh so hard i was they would that would that would be a spite sponsorship because i do not like caffeine <laughs> wait does i i didn't i didn't think that balls had caffeine in it oh it's an energy drink i forget they all did well, well uh i think that has like guarine or whatever it is i think it's one of those caffeine yeah. free ones Guar uh, I just, bro i just stick with coffee the man. one and only like, balls guarana highly caffeinated premium soda Never mind. Ah. <laughs> Wait, soda. That's like like all those energy drinks are carbonated, right? Mo most of them are. Bro, can we okay? Can we agree that like Red Bull's not that good? Like, it depends. I don't, I don't think I've ever enjoyed drinking a Red Bull. <laughs> the, well, I will I say think, I don't think I've ever had a Red Bull. I, I will say that a re, uh, if you if you add Red Bull to like a uh, strawberry smoothie, that's pretty freaking good. Um, whenever so you I like was, it, you like hmm? it as an accent, not like the yes, flavor. yes. exactly. Uh, it gives you wings. Um, while I was at a, uh, I was I was at a Dave and Buster's in, in New York City, and they had like drinks and stuff. And me and my brother were out there like until like four or five o'clock in the morning playing video games because it was like a twenty four. I think it, at one point it was a twenty four seven. Uh, Dave and Buster's or something like that. It was open way later than what it should have been. And like, I, I just kept going and getting those. And I didn't realize that it was Red Bull that was in them. <laughs> so, so I was, I was on another plane of existence for the next like day and a half. Cause I got like five of them. They were so freaking good. It was like a, it was a, it was a strawberry smoothie with, red bull in it and i was just like i did i've never played ddr better in my life though i'll tell you that much <laughs> holy frick i i could see into the matrix it's like the uh the episode of future where fry drinks the 100 cups of coffee and <laughs> yeah. time slows down around him yeah i imagine you on the ddr machine to be like this song isn't normally this slow why is it slow <laughs> bro i was playing stuff that i haven't beaten since that day like, like <laughs> they're, they're like harder for it was like a ddr double a uh i'm sorry ddr x2 machine i think and they had like like special versions of like the legend of max and freaking like 
Max Unlimited, and I was like playing those and just destroying them. But I haven't played. I, I haven't been able to really play them or beat them since. So I think it actually helped. <laughs> It was oh, crazy. Man. I'll never do that again, though, because, like, oh, my God, I, I thought my heart was going to explode uh, <laughs> over the next couple of days. Uh, <laughs> I've been reminded I, that apparently I had a Red Bull at Coliseum. Ah. Uh, it was, oh, yeah, because we had, yellow. like, we had a bunch. Yeah, that was, like, the anniversary of an edition or something like that. I, I drank it in four <laughs> seconds, and it tasted like horse piss. <laughs> That's the how you The reason get I know this <laughs> so you, wait, no, no, no. Horse wait, 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 gives wait, wait, you wait, no, 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 stop. Just stop there. Just stop there. I, I wanna I wanna leave that in the cliffhanger of the reason I know this and we do not go back to it at all. <laughs> like why it gives you wait. The first we are we are not going back to that. Uh, oh. oh my god. <laughs> I, I apologize for like cutting you off, Steven, but like the the, the instance of, of comedy over the fact that you know what horse piss tastes like and not explaining it is incredible. <laughs> Pretty simple explanation, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Woo! Well, we learned something today. Something we never wanted to learn. <laughs> Amen. How was the orange juice cereal, by the way? <laughs> Speaking of. Man, let... Mm. It's, been, it's 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 been two months. I, I've I've had enough. I've had a a fair bit of rage um, building up inside my system that I haven't been able to properly vent to my my internet friends. Um, it's fine. Whoa, however, what? Calm, calm, calm down, Stephen. That's a lot of rage you got going on. There. However, here here's the problem. The problem is. Milk, which Milk. is typically what you put your cereal in, uh, is not acidic. So the <laughs> problem is, you know, you, you, you have this orange juice cereal, and the cereal itself is fine. You can have it dry. You can even have it with milk. But when you have it in the, in the orange juice, you, you put it in your mouth, and you're like, huh, okay. And then as soon as you think that, your brain goes, acid. <laughs> and that's not okay. That is not what cereal is or is supposed to be. And unfortunately, if you've had cereal ever, your brain is pre-programmed to know what that's going to be like. And the minute you put orange juice cereal in your mouth, um, it your brain just says, wrong, wrong. So every bite, your brain is just screaming wrong at you. Bro, so that what? So what you're saying is that they need to make this like they need to make it an alkaline cereal to, to neutralize the acid. <laughs> <Is that right? laughs> you know that's not what I was saying, <laughs> but it would probably work. <laughs> Dude, I, I I'm getting heartburn just thinking about eating that cereal. Yeah, like, no, part of a complete God. breakfast. There's like a jar, jar. There's an entire jar of Tums next to the uh, <laughs> next to this, the the box in the bowl. Dude, I um, think that. The, the real problem was that the first day we had it, we had it as intended um, with the orange juice. And then the second day, I was like, I'm going to try this with milk. And my brain, it was too late. My brain had been programmed. I was like, oh, well, this isn't acidic. This, this is a little strange. It doesn't have the acid in it. Uh, I can't remember if I talked about this uh, disc on disc only. Um, but have you ever tried cereal with half and half? No. No. That seems no. like it'd be too rich. So, okay. So it is freaking phenomenal, first of all. Um, it is actually really, really good. And my buddy, my buddy C. The Prez was like, yo, you have to. He actually bought me a thing of freaking half and half so that I would try it. And it was actually fantastic. The only problem, the only problem is uh, like I, uh, my stomach doesn't like lactose. So like. I wouldn't say that I'm lactose intolerant like hardcore, but it just it upsets my stomach a little bit. And as much as I want to have it, I can't. But it's actually fantastic. Because like the th here's the thing about it. It keeps the cereal crunchy. It doesn't, like, make the cereal super, like, soggy really fast. So the cereal can't absorb it. Exactly. Well. It, can, okay. it can't absorb it. And it, 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 there's, it, it, there's folks in chat that don't know what half and half is. It's half milk, half heavy cream. Yeah. Um, oh my god. Try cereal with coffee? 
I, I don't think I'm going to try cereal with coffee. Are we just going to uh, try cereal with all the liquids? Do I need to get a um? I need to get a, a jug of the antifreeze for the gas station. Bro, oh, give me stop those. going. See, please stop picking up antifreeze there. Go, dude. Give me, give me some freaking, give me some Cheerios and Vault. That's what I want to try <laughs> right now. Oh, I love Vault, dude. I I can't get Vault because it it, it oh. It'll keep me up for days, but I used to drink Vault all the freaking time whenever I was younger. You know oh. what would we'll go great with this bowl of Captain Crunch? A heaping helping of Arizona iced tea. <laughs> no! It's cheaper than milk. Uh, it, it, it is, actually. That's funny. <laughs> I think y'all got Erica laughing downstairs. Uh, um, freaking, what is it? Oh, dang it. Now my brain's fried. I can't remember what I was going to say. And then we go to extremes, like, here's a bowl of Rice Krispies with bleach. Oh, no! No, no don't do that. No! I, a, a disclaimer, do not drink bleach. <laughs> the fact that you even have to say that is funny. Disc only and its uh, creators are not <laughs> responsible affiliates, for any, yeah. <laughs> yeah, are not responsible for any, any harm done. Uh. <laughs> I love the fact that, like, on my cast, sometimes I have to be like, for legal reasons, this is a joke. <laughs> and then I have to mean it, you know. <laughs> like the I I want to kill you in Minecraft. In Minecraft. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you you got a full taste of that when we played Mario Party with Children Ray. I'm gonna kill you in game. In game. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> Did you in see game. someone try to make a filing with the FBI to make that I want to kill you in Minecraft a legitimate threat? Jesus Christ! Wow. <laughs> My virtual person was at risk here. <laughs> you die in the game. You die for real. <laughs> Bro, you know you know how long it was? How long I've worked on that hardcore Minecraft game? God bless. You killed me. Now it's over. I've actually only played Minecraft like three times in my entire life. Uh, one with y'all, one with um, with my community, and one by myself. <laughs> Was the one with us uh, during Coliseum, or was that like when we had that server up? We had the server up. That's okay. that's what it was. Yeah, I think I think Jules was streaming it or whatever, and that that was a fun time. Yeah, I yeah. just like I'm so horrendous at Minecraft. I'm so bad at that video game. I know that's like a weird thing to say, but I just suck at Minecraft. I don't know what to do, like at all. <laughs> I mean, you mine and then you craft. I understand that, but I just, I, ah, I just suck at it. You kind of like it, it, when you first play it, it's like you're just discovering anything. But like once you know everything, you kind of have to give yourself a goal whenever you play it. So it's like, okay, what am I gonna do this time when I play Minecraft? Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm one of those that like likes the goal to be laid out in front of me. I think yeah. that's why I like, I like roguelites so much, like Enter the Gungeon or freaking Hades or, um, dude. Oh my God. Okay. Freaking John, you've played Peglin, right? Yeah. Dude, that game is awesome. Oh, it is I played pretty it good. yesterday. I played it yesterday and I was like, this is this is scratching every itch because I love Peggle and I love roguelites. And that was just like, oh, it was fantastic. I wonder how much they've well, added since because I played it like when it the week it came out. That's yeah, when they, I played they, it on stream. They just now like they just added another uh patch recently. Oh, okay. Yeah, and dude, oh my god. I didn't know that game was so good. Like it's one of my it's one of my go-to freaking streaming games if I'm not feeling up for drumming. For those who don't know what it is, Paglin is basically uh a roguelike game kind of like uh Slay the Spire where you have to go through like a branching path of areas and like each area you stop in is like a different event or like combat. Yeah. But the combat is Pagel. So you have to like hit all these colored pins with like a ball that you shoot into like a field. And the more mm -hmm. pegs it hits, or whatever ball type you're using, adds more damage and et cetera. Yeah, I, I think it's actually on sale until the seventh of. Yeah. It's July. in early access. Just a warning, but yeah. Yes, I, I, I think it's like nineteen normally, so it's like seventeen fifty right now. It's 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 so worth it though. Like I want, I need more people to know about Peglin because it's so good. Did any of you ever play uh, Peggle Two with the Connect? Not with the Connect. No. no. You use, your sounds... you, you use your hand to aim it, and you have to say "take shot" in order for it to take the shot. Oh, I played Peggle Two on mobile because not, it, was... Uh, it, it was not uh, it was not very responsive. 
<laughs> I, 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 someone said in the chat said press forward. I'd say that that uh, that Odama is probably more uh, probably more responsive than uh, than Peggle too. Was there the a Kinect. Dragon Ball fighting game for Connect? Yes. Yes, there was. I think it was How literally was called Dragon Ball Z for Connect. It was That's bad. I don't think. It, yeah, <laughs> it I don't think really it was very bad. good like because no one be ever bad. talks about it. Seems like it would be very bad. I bought a Connect when I was in college because I was a 3D animation student, and I heard that it could be used for uh, for motion capture. I never used it for that. <laughs> The I Connect feel... <laughs> was a weird thing, man. Yeah. I used mine just to yell at my Xbox from other rooms so it would turn itself on and the TV for me. <laughs> That's what I, I should... use Alexa for. I should hook it up to my Xbox because mine will turn on by itself sometimes to try and update. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes <laughs> while I'm streaming. <sighs> and I've got the I've got one of those uh those HDMI splitters that automatically switches over when it detects a new source coming into it. So it'll turn on and the screen will go back and be like, <gasps> and it'll be, it'll be like, oh, the, the game didn't break. The Xbox turned on. <laughs> oh, man. So if I had the Kinect hooked up, I could be like, turn yourself off, damn it. And there was like, only okay. there was only one game on the Kinect that I actually got to work correctly. And it was the Kinect Adventures game. Um, yeah. And I played it a lot in my in the in the the best buy freaking like that I worked at, we had like a, a little break room and we had it set up in that break room and I played it for hours, dude. Like, it was actually super fun for me. Did you ever get Game Boat? No. So one of the accessories you could buy for the Kinect and for Kinect Adventures was literally an inflatable raft you put in your living room called Game Boat. And you just stood in it and played Connect Adventures. That's all it was. It was just an inflatable <laughs> raft you stood in. They even said on the box, do not use as a flotation device. Oh, my God. That sounds Game like boat. a challenge. <laughs> Hang Wait, on. Before uh, we start one... wrapping up, I have to find a picture of Game Boat. Hang on. Game Boat. God. It's the absurdity of it all. <laughs> Steven, yeah. how uh you you played a bunch of Wii games uh in in your in your time most <laughs> most of them fairly recently how how are a lot of those in terms of like responsiveness in terms of their controls we of course know the glories of Bizzard the Wizard but what others I mean so that's the thing right like most Wii games are fine like the Wii is known for shovelware and you can generally tell by looking at the cover if it's going to be terrible if you feel like it's going to be terrible, it's probably going to be terrible. But as far as like the controls go, a lot of them are like, eh, it's fine. <laughs> it's not, it's not, I don't know. The The thing that I don't like is when they're <laughs> not given options. I'm sorry, <laughs> so. the game boat came on. It's exactly what John said. There is, does it... <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Does, does, it, it does, so it doesn't interact with the game at all. It's just it's just an inflatable boat it's that you put there. in the floor. Is that is that, am I yep. am I gleaning that right? That's it. It's just something oh. you stand in, and that's it to make you feel like you're doing the ra river rafting game in Connect Adventures. And it's and, and, and it's just made to look like the raft in game. Like that's yeah. its whole thing. That's it. Yep. Holy uh, cow! It's the stupidest thing ever, yeah. dude. Ima imagine though. Imagine actually selling that like i'm because <laughs> like somebody somebody thought that hey we need the raft out of the game in order to increase the like the uh what is it called um oh shoot Immersive. the immersion the immersion, the immersion you know? yeah. <laughs> like oh the guy who thought that up and made that actually a thing like how how hard is it to make a product right like think of like think about that like how hard is it to get something like that in stores Seems well, sir, we made a boat that you can't use. Game boat. <laughs> like, the, like the, um... I think I think back to like those uh those um those like holders for the Wii remote that look like the different sports things, like the golf club and the tennis racket and all that. Yeah, like and those are infinitely that? more functional than the game boat because they're well, a, because like you can at least like you know because it kind of gives you like a point of reference to what you're doing in the game. Never so forget the Wii bowling the, ball. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to mention. I actually have one, and I got a chance to use it during the past Extra Life. We played Wii Sports, and I did a round of Wii Sports bowling with the bowling ball peripheral. 
Jesus Christ. <laughs> there is a huge problem with the bowling ball peripheral as compared to, let's say, the tennis racket or the golf club. See, when you use a tennis racket or a golf club, when you swing those things in real life, you you continue to hold them. <laughs> the problem with a bowling ball is you that don't. you let it go. So you can see where the, the, the error in their ways comes in is that you're holding the bowling ball and you're like, yeah, this feels all right. And then you wind back and you, you push forward and then everything in your head that you've known about bowling for your entire life is like, let go. And then you have to say, don't let go. The TV is there. Oh, Christ. It's a terrible, terrible invention. How much does that ball weigh? It is surprisingly heavy. Beautiful. It is. It that is, is exactly, far heavier than exactly what I wanted to hear. That is... And it has a wrist strap <laughs> for obvious not, reasons. It's, but it's it's uh, first off, the wrist strap is a tiny little. It feels like it could snap at any moment. And the bowling ball is so heavy, and the holes aren't cut quite right, especially for my giant hands. <laughs> Everything about the experience was unpleasant. So See, this is not, the right. This is the it rage was I was good. expecting over the over the orange juice cereal. <laughs> the orange every, juice cereal was it was fine. Every time I go to the states, it always bugs me because every time like we want to go bowling, all you guys have is ten pin, and it it's always so weird because I grew up with five pin, so uh, and it's just so vastly different. So it's just like everyone's like, yeah, we've been like, let's go bowling. Like it's all like you know how to bowl. I'm like, not this way, because like five pin bowling is way smaller. Like, it's maybe more you're, like, throwing something the size of a softball down the lane, and there's only five mm. pins to hit. So, like, it's way easier to do, and it's way lighter. So that's probably more so the weight of the actual thing that you're throwing. But, yeah. Less chance for injury. I mean, John, just... Mm. <laughs> that depends, because go usually, because they're lighter, you're hucking them way farther down the lane. Oh, uh, I see. You know, when you go when you go bowling in the States, just... Just imagine that you're you're doing two frames every frame. It's you know you're just really getting more bang for your buck. <laughs> I uh, I've actually never I've never even heard of five pin. I didn't know that was a thing. Me either. Uh, is that is that standard in Canada? Uh, we have both. Uh, I'm trying okay. to trying to find an actual like size. Com Here we go. Perfect. This is a yes. this is a ball size comparison for five pin and ten pin uh, on Wikipedia. Uh, is this candlestick bowling or is this different? It's apparently called duck pin. Hmm. So this, candle pin's apparently smaller. The yeah, ball's smaller. So for this, pin. this is this is the bowling I grew up with was five pin, which is literally like the ball is half the size of a ten pin one. So the first time I went to the states to do ten pin, I'm like, what the fuck is this? If I went to go do five pin, could I bring my own bocce ball? Mm, probably not. Yeah, I didn't think so. Hmm. Neat. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I muted there for a second. Um, Erica just came into my my office, scared the ever living hell out of me, and told me, "Yes, John is right. There are five pins in Canada." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was just like, "Yep, that's a thing," and I'm like, Art "Thank you for telling Art me," and also scaring the frick out of me. Part of me wished you didn't mute, so so the audience at home could have heard that. Oh. But that's incredible. <laughs> God, dude, frick! I was just like, <gasps> dude. <laughs> Oh. All right. Shall it's, we wrap it's up then? I yeah. never heard of uh, I'd never heard of five pin bowling, so this is new to me. I thought maybe it was candlestick, but it's not. Well, I didn't realize that the the pin size was different too. Again, on Wikipedia, they show here's a there's a picture of the difference in pin size, and I didn't realize because it's been so long since I've done five pin. Oh, wrong one. Uh, they're half the size. Yeah. Everything's makes, bigger yeah. in America. Shorter, shorter yeah. and stouter. Shorter yeah. and stouter, yeah. So, it, it, like, it's just five pins, and, like, the middle pin's worth five, the, the ones next to the middle are worth three, and the end ones are worth two. So each frame's worth 15 points, basically. Oh, so in the, they're in, like, a V shape? Yeah. Okay, I was, I was wondering how they were arranged, because I was like, mm, they can't be in, like, a diamond shape, because that'd be, like, that'd be a lot more than that. That'd be, like, They're eight. scattered randomly around the lane, and you just have to make sure you hit them all as you're going down the lane. No, no, it's not. Okay, you, yeah, you had me going there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> to be perfectly honest. 
So a candle pin that could theoretically do like a flip and land upright, you don't get the points for them. Uh, I mean, it, <laughs> if it pulled more, that off, that would be impressive. That would be actually They had more impressive. of a chance to because, the, because they're, the, like, they're, the, they're the same shape on like both sides. So you could do like a little half flip and they'd just be up on, up on there. Here, here's the... Oh, that's weird. Yeah, that's, this is five pin for comparison. They're spread so far apart. Yeah. It feels like you're missing pins. <laughs> When I it's look like, at that, but I'm it's like, so looking at that, it's like it's the it's the same. The, the lane is the same size as normal as as ten pin bowling. Yeah, correct. Okay, pretty much. I think it might Ooh. be a tiny bit thinner, but it's more or less like looks exact same. That's interesting. Mm. Well, disc only I, I podcast hope. where you can learn about the uh, about the various types of bowling. Next up, we're gonna hit the different types of pool or snooker. <laughs> snooker or billiards. <laughs> Billiards. So was Wii Sports a weird experience? Oh yeah, totally. I was like, I think at that point I had already played ten pin, so I like I I got in the gist. I'm like, this is still weird. But at the same time, I wasn't putting like my fingers into a giant like piece of marble to huck down a lane <laughs> with my hands still attached to it. So at least like that wasn't happening. My favorite thing in Wii bowling was always letting the ball go behind me. Because it's like, the, man, that would cause so more, so much more damage in real life. Instead, everyone just jumps and spins. The hmm. the ball weight in in bowling is, I mean, it really runs the gamut. Like you've got balls that are for kids that are a lot lighter, but those things get up to like, you know, twenty five pounds or whatever. That's so, crazy. What are the what are the weights in? In five pin, I'm in five pin, I don't also... think there's a weight difference. I think there's just it's the just one universal. Weight. Yeah, really. Huh. What? I think so. I so I think with the one weight uh, is attributed to the smaller size because I don't think you would have like first off they probably because like I guess it would depend on what they what they like fill the the heavier balls with. But I imagine with the smaller one, it's universal because you don't you don't have to adjust to the um you don't have to adjust to like different people playing because of, because the size is so small. Trying to find the weight of a five pin bowling ball. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it but like it makes it it no, it makes more sense in that regard than say like with with ten pin bowling where the balls are uh where the uh, the balls are massive, and like you're not just gonna have like a like a like a five year old come up there and be like, all right, Timmy, here's a here's a um uh, a bowling ball that weighs about half as much as you do. Good luck. <laughs> I re I remember some of the difficulties uh being a child and trying to pick out a ball at the bowling alley. Because sometimes they would have the the number on the ball, but a lot of times they didn't. So you just kept continually putting your fingers in holes and lifting a ball and being like, "No, that mm -mm, that ain't gonna work." And then you just do it over and over until you fingered every ball in the stupid alley. <laughs> okay, finally, hold the phone. Finally, have something that'll work. Wait a minute. <laughs> you heard him, Tom. Context. <laughs> you heard him, Tom. Uh, All right, amazing. Amazing, please. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for listening. <laughs> <laughs> three pounds, six ounces of three pounds, 12 ounces for a five-pin bowling ball. Or 1.5 kilograms to 1.7, if that's what you use. Anyway, well, super light. talking points for this episode of Disc Only, since we've been yelled at by Dan. Uh, <laughs> sick Tom. Before, oh. Wait, hold on a second. Before you're done, Dan, I need you to add fingering balls to that, that uh, talking points <laughs> list. Uh... <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I love how instead of just saying it at the end, he is going to type it out. Yep. <laughs> yep. yep. There it is. It's right there. Because he wants want me to, to say forget. it. That's what he wants. Heck yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, talking points for this episode of Disc Only. Sick Tom. Too many games. Sugar 2.0. <laughs> Throw the game. Strike me down, Mario. <laughs> Chicken tree. Shaken, not stirred. Golden Colored Eye. Two Week Game. Drop Kicking Godzilla. Mascot Cart. Too Many Strems. Marveling Over Movies. Oh, Tom Needs His Decaffeinated Soda. Battery Cereal. <laughs> <laughs> Mine and Craft. Can't Connect. Game Boat. Canadian bowling, and of course, fingering balls. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
I'll take uh, fingering balls for 200, John. Do 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 do. It's daily uh, double. Daily double. <laughs> Sweet, the daily dum- double fingering balls. Oh my god. Uh, Dan, what do you got going on? I'm gonna try to talk to you first. <laughs> oh, g- good. Um, yeah. So, um, just been streaming at uh, Twitch.tv slash Motion Dan. Um, I haven't streamed lately because I've been sick. Turns out it wasn't COVID, thankfully, but. I have been getting a lot better the last couple of days, so you should see me doing more stuff. So, yeah, for that. Nice. Tom, what about you? Uh, I got the usual Let's Plays going on. We're getting close to the end of Shantae, and I have no idea how far from the end of Oblivion we are. But uh, we're uh, in, a, in a couple months... We will be hitting the one-year anniversary since I started Let's Playing Oblivion. So, uh, hey... That'll be neat. Um, but uh, b- 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 in terms of like uh, streaming, I got really nothing like special going on. I've been playing a lot of Minecraft Sky Factory uh, just to like kind of chill. Um, at the end of the month, when Xenoblade Chronicles 3 comes out, I'm going to be doing a subathon uh, of which I have cleverly titled Xenoblade Subathon 3. <laughs> and uh, yep. Yep, I just you know took out Chronicles and added Subathon to that. So come check that out. I'm gonna try and make a bunch of sub goals in that one, and and you know do things in that that hor- that that hopefully don't end horrifically, like like maybe a one chip challenge or Ooh. something akin to that. Anyway, that's all I got. I went to a con last weekend. Nice, Steven. <laughs> Uh, so we moved, and uh, my entire life revolves now around taking things out of a box and finding a place to put them. As a result, uh, we don't have our normal setup, but we are still doing streams on Friday. Last Friday, we t- we uh, opened up Captain Toad. I ain't never played Captain Toad. So Mal and I played it. It's fun. It's a good game. Mm. Um, so we might play more of that on Friday. I don't know. It's but for the next few weeks, like Fridays are just going to kind of be like real weird, super chill, casual streams. So if you like the idea of two people like stopping midstream to like go make dinner, but they don't turn the stream off, and then they come back and they play more Captain Toad, you know, that's that's what we're doing on Fridays. You know, what you could do, I guess, depending on like uh how much you you. Uh, value like uh, privacy is that you can get one of those apps for your phone that connects to OBS and acts as, uh, acts as a stream camera so you could show people you making the pizza uh, we've we've been doing that but with cameras <laughs> oh yeah you got the <laughs> HDMI uh, receiver don't you we got like we got there's just there's so many cameras in this house um, so we just have cameras pointed <laughs> in places just like so you stream can... directly into the security cameras <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that's that's what's uh, that's what's been going on. It's fun. <laughs> Big Brother, North Carolina. <laughs> Only two contestants. It's really weird, and really easy. And a cat. The yeah, cat's probably cat. gonna win. The cat's actually the host. The cat is going to win. <laughs> Jared, what about you? Uh, drumming Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, over on the channel. Um, on July 29th, I am doing a big old music event for um uh the humane society uh it's gonna be really cool there's a bunch of different musicians that are gonna be working on it and uh speaking of prior uh events so you remember you remember how i did or how we played uh kaizo john on Mm -hmm. uh trg so i finally got around to doing the kaizo mario crowd controlled and uh i freaking beat it nice you did you did the second half nice yeah, I well, no, I beat the entire game, like just overall. Because oh, really you started it. from scratch again. Yeah. So what's funny is that my game was freaking messed up, and I couldn't get past the final blue switch. So what I had to do was restart it all the way over again, and I beat the game twice in the oh, same sitting. Oh, that's gross. <laughs> that's so gross. So, but yeah, no, we we ended up beating it. I ended up playing with uh, uh with Jacob, and it was a good time. But uh, I just I just wanted to I just wanted to bring that up because that was a part of TRG Coliseum, and uh, we finally got that done. But other than that, I mean, it's just uh just drums all the way down, as it were. Nice, 
Uh, as for me, uh, back on normal stream schedule. Got back from vacation from Emil's like a couple weeks ago. Uh, tomorrow, we're doing Grand Theft Auto Five multiplayer stream. Uh, Thursday nights are my usual podcast over at Top Ten Perspective. Uh, Saturdays are the usual fortune cookie jam where chat gets to vote on what we play next. And we just finished Devil May Cry 5 on game clearing, so we're starting a new game on Monday. So Mondays are game clearing, Wednesdays are wild card days, don't know what's going to happen. Xenoblade Chronicles has been going on there, that was a Coliseum incentive as well, and that'll continue next week. So uh, every second Wednesday or so should be Xenoblade Chronicles, and otherwise it's just the usual schedule. All right. Wonderful. Uh, as always, a special thank you to Popsky for our theme song, Prism Shard for our logo, Paper Pennies for the beautiful art in our intro, and our producer is Motion Dan. Are we thinking we're good to our first uh, Tuesday of the month schedule again? Are we thinking it's going to be August 2nd? I think I, so. Yeah, I've I believe so. Planned for that. Yeah. Probably. I'm going out of town after our birthday um, on the 5th. So, yeah, it should be fine. Stephen was in the middle of saying something, I believe. Sorry. Oh, I was just saying, yee. Okay. Oh. I, 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 <laughs> I, couldn't, I, I couldn't tell if that was a yee or like starting off saying we, and then like you kept getting cut off. Dan, what about you? You good for it? Uh, yeah, I, I, I should be. Um, also, just, just hearing that uh, it's apparently this is our two-year anniversary. Yep. I was going to say that on the outro. Happy two years of disc only, everybody. Good God. From and Outback, keep in mind, this, that's house. two years of it being its own standalone thing, not the Coliseum segment. This is, this yeah, is yeah. a standalone thing. Yeah. Um, thank you to everybody who's listened and been watching uh, and rating on like iTunes and junk. Um, really appreciate you. And maybe tell somebody. Maybe tell a friend if you haven't yet. From you Outback know? Stab House to Fingering Balls. We, uh, oh, we thank God. you. God. Uh, I what apologize a stag, for everything right? I've ever said on this show. You know what? That's the note we go out on. Good night, everybody. See you all next month. Okay. I think my, I think my other alerts kicked in at maybe the worst time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was an hour ago, for those wondering. Yeah. <laughs> Are these going to show up in the audio? In the uh, audio broadcast? No, not, not in the audio unless Dan pulls okay. the audio from it. Well, probably well now that we mentioned it. Man, unless the, unless this part's not going in it at all. I hope I hope some of the fan artists make uh, Shaq cart uh, presents the California Raisins, etc. But they make the roster. I would really love to see a <laughs> roster picture. <laughs> oh my god! Month. It'd be yeah, like one of those. Uh, it'd be like when Brawl was coming out and people were making their own like character select screens, and it was like these yes. giant massive screens with a ton of characters that would never get I, into Smash. I can't wait.